Hi guys! In medical imaging, the photon radiation characteristic important is their penetrating power, especially when we're talking about uh, medical imaging or in radiation protection for shielding. In this short video lecture, I will discuss the attenuation of photon radiation. Let's start. And we have the following subtopics for this video lecture. Let's say we have an incoming photon radiation. It can be X-ray or gamma ray. It can lead into three possible outcomes. Uh, first, uh, the photon may be absorbed wherein it will transfer its energy to atoms of the target material. Second, it may be scattered during one or more interactions. Last, the third, uh, it will traverse the medium without any interaction. The probability in which a photon interaction is not small depends on the geometric arrangement of the photon source, absorber, and detector. The assumption here is that the beam is narrow and the transmitted beam contains no scattered photons. So that's important, no scattered photons. This is called the narrow beam geometry. This is relevant to situations in which experimental studies uh, to investigate the properties of materials as shown at the lower right. We have this uh, setup wherein we have this uh, X which, which refers to the to the size of the absorber or the detector. Then we have the distance of your source to the detector which is 10 times that variable X. We can express the number of penetrating photons in a thin slab with thickness, uh, thickness X as shown in this equation. So I is equal to I naught E to the negative uh, mu, which is your attenuation coefficient times X for a narrow beam geometry and monoenergetic beam. Now, to further illustrate the beam geometry, we have these drawings. At the left, we have narrow beam geometry designed to minimize the number of scattered photons recorded using source and detector collimators. On the other hand, broad beam measurement or broad beam geometry shown in the right is important when designing shielding walls for radiation safety because we take uh, in broad beam geometry many scattered photons. Now let's talk about the number of photons that is attenuated which refers to those photons absorbed or scattered. Using our expression earlier, uh, we can define your uh, I attenuated as the difference between I naught minus I, wherein I here is the number of photons penetrating a thin slab. Uh, now uh, we can express this one into this. So we have I naught and this exponential function. Your I naught here refers to the number of photons before the slab as shown in the drawing. So this is the slab and this is your I naught. This one refers to the photons uh, penetrating this thin slab and we have this I attenuated which refers to this one. Your uh, exponential function here refers to the probability that a photon traverses a thin slab without interacting. So last, uh, I will define here mean path length or mean free path. So this is the average distance traveled by photons before interaction in a medium. This is just the inverse of the total linear attenuation coefficient. The exponential function or the probability that the photon traverses a certain thickness x without interacting can be expressed as the product of probabilities that the photon does not interact through any five uh, interaction processes. We have the following interaction cross-section here. So I will just bring out my laser pointer. Uh, we have first the omega, this one, which refers to the coherent or relay scattering. Then we have the tau uh, for photoelectric absorption. We have sigma, which refers to the Compton scattering. We have kappa uh, for pair production. And we, are, we have pi for photo disintegration. Thus, we have this final expression for total linear attenuation coefficient. In terms of diagnostic radiology, we mostly have photoelectric absorption and Compton scattering. Other photon interactions are commonly negligible. We can express these coefficients by dividing the linear attenuation coefficients 
by the mass density rho, as shown here. This is called the mass attenuation coefficients, uh, with units of square meters per kilogram or uh, square centimeter per gram, as shown. When using the mass attenuation coefficients, the slab thickness x are expressed in units like kilogram per square meter or grams per square centimeter. In addition, the thickness can be expressed in terms of atoms per square meter or electrons per square meter as shown here. So we have uh, your x sub a, which is equal to x, the thickness, times the quantity rho, the mass density. We have the Avogadro's number n sub a. Then we have the gram atomic mass. Next, uh, we have x sub e, which is the number of electrons per square meter. And we have the atoms uh, per square meter x sub a times the atomic number z. Uh, using these thickness expressions, we can define a total atomic or electronic attenuation coefficients, mu, as shown on the right. So i bring out my laser pointer. So we have this expression for both uh, u sub a for the atomic attenuation coefficient and we have u sub e for the electronic attenuation coefficient. Now I will define half value layer. Uh, this refers to the slab thickness required to reduce the intensity or then the exposure rate of a photon to half and this is called again the half value layer or sometimes this is half value thickness or HDT. This mainly describes the beam quality or when we say quality here, it is the penetrating power of the beam. What we have defined here is the first half value layer. Consequently, the second half value layer is the amount of material needed to reduce the intensity by one half after the previous half value layer. We also uh, define here the homogeneity factor or the HF shown here, which is described or which describes the polychromatic nature of beam. This is always less than one for a narrow polychromatic beam due to beam hardening or this is the removal of the lower energetic photons while it is equal to one uh, for monoenergetic beam. So I have this table here. It shows the recommended minimum penetration or the HBL for various KVP values. Note that uh, KVP is just the kilovoltage peak, which is the peak potential applied to the X-ray tube, which accelerates electrons from the cathode to the anode in radiography or computed tomography. Tube voltage, in turn, determines the quantity and quality of the photons generated. Uh, this increasing KVP increases the X-ray penetration power. As KVP increases, greater proportion of photons interact with the body, and the HBL for aluminum also increases. Some radiation shielding problems require the use of thick absorbers. Thus, we will define here tent value layer, also known as the tent value thickness or TVT or TVL. It is the absorber thickness to decrease the transmitted beam intensity by a factor of 10. I have one example under the narrow beam conditions for cobalt-60 source with average photon energy of about 1.33 mega electron volts. The HBL for water is 11.2 cm and the TBL in lead is about 36.2 millimeters, mainly for uh, shielding purposes. Filtration is actually the effect where the beam will have higher average photon energy while the lower part of the energy spectrum will be attenuated and higher photon energy are more likely to pass without interaction. I have this uh, figure at the lower left. This shows the X-ray spectra with and without filtration and as, as we can see, once we have filtered the X-ray beam, the lower part of the spectrum is removed. And uh, this is actually useful in diagnostic or therapy machines to have higher penetrating ability 
by placing aluminum or copper or other thickness of materials. Given a polyenergetic X-ray spectrum, this one, uh, we will have different values of attenuation coefficients. However, we can use the measured HBL to get the effective attenuation coefficient. Okay, uh, previously we just talked about attenuation coefficient which refers to the amount of total attenuation, which refers to the absorption, and the scatter. There are times that we just want to get the energy absorbed in the material, not those as scattered. We use this expression for the energy absorption coefficient to describe that one. Now, uh, let us have a brief discussion of photon interactions and its role in medical imaging. First, a coherent or relay scattering. This is where a photon is deflected or scattered with negligible loss of energy. This is important in tissue for low energy photons, and it usually reduces the resolution for nuclear imaging scans due to low energy gammas. Second, we have the photoelectric absorption, and this is when an X ray or gamma ray transferred its total energy to an inner shell electron thus ejecting it. The average binding energy of soft tissue is about 0.5 kilo electron volt for K-shell electron. Due to the vacancy, it may lead to characteristic photon emission or OJ electron emission that are rapidly absorbed by the surrounding uh, tissues. The photoelectric mass attenuation coefficient as shown here at the lower uh, right. Uh, this refers to the absorption edges which is observed and this is important in choosing the photon energy for imaging with contrast made of let's say compounds made out of iodine or and barium with this uh, k absorption edges it means that the photon energy should at least equal or exceed these energies to interact predominantly with the k shell electrons so i have here a drawing uh, we have the photoelectric mass attenuation coefficient for both lead and soft tissue or muscle with photon energy at the x-axis. It also shows the absorption edges for lead related to the binding energies of electrons in the inner shells. Note that photoelectric mass attenuation coefficient varies approximately to z cube. Thus, for a photon of, let's say, of 15 kilo electron volts, it will be absorbed through photoelectric interaction more by bones than soft tissue with the given Z-effective values. A reason also why uh, low-energy X-rays are useful in imaging because it produces contrast based on varying values of Z and densities. Photon energies of about 30 kilo electron volts to 30 mega electron volts commonly interacts in soft tissue through Compton scattering, wherein part of the incident photon energy is transferred to a free electron. When we have high energy photon, example uh, from a linear accelerator, most of the energy is transferred to Compton electron than the scattered photon. Co Compton mass attenuation coefficient is actually directly related to the electron density of the medium and almost independent to the atomic number Z. Therefore, more free electrons, uh, there will be more Compton scattering events. In imaging, high photon energy will not necessarily give a good image contrast. The last interaction is pair production. This requires photon energy of at least 1.02 mega electron volts, thus it is irrelevant to radiographic imaging. In addition, its mass attenuation coefficient varies with Z. And that's it for this lecture. Hi! If you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, GT Academia. See you in the next video.